Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. Today, let's take a look at managing your fonts with FontBook. So some of us use our Macs for applications that require a lot of fonts. For instance, if you do desktop publishing or if you do video. In this case, you've got a ton of fonts in your machine. Now you've probably seen FontBook. When you install a font, you double click on it and it launches FontBook and gives you a preview of the font and asks if you want to install it. You say yes and then you're done with it. But you can use FontBook for more. You can use FontBook to organize your font collections and you can also use FontBook to validate your fonts and look for duplicate fonts. So here's FontBook. You can find it in your Applications folder. FontBook will give you a list of all the fonts installed in your machine but also just allow you to narrow it by the ones in your current language that you have your Mac set for, the ones installed only in your user folder, and the ones installed in your entire computer. The ones installed only in your user folder can only be used by that user of the machine, while the rest of the fonts can be used by any user. You also have collections here. You can use some of the preset collections, say fixed width, just to show you which fonts are fixed width. You can also make your own collections by pressing the plus sign here, giving it a name, and then dragging and dropping any fonts you want to that collection. For instance, let's go ahead and create my fonts. Now we can go ahead and select some fonts that we want and drag them to my fonts. Now we've got a collection of fonts here. Now this really comes in useful when you go to another program like TextEdit. I'm going to type some text and say I want to change the font of that text. Command T brings up the Fonts panel. Now the Fonts panel has the collections on the left so you can look through all your fonts here by family or you can actually select one of the collections that you made like My Fonts. It makes it a lot easier to find the fonts that you want. In this font panel you can also do a lot of things you could do in FontBook. For instance, you can go ahead and add new fonts to a collection without having to go into FontBook. FontBook is also very handy for finding a good font. Since you can quickly move through the fonts and see previews of them, you can find that perfect font for the document you want to produce. Now in FontBook you can also do some other things. For instance, you can look for duplicate fonts. It's very common to have duplicate fonts either when the same font is stored under a different file name or when you have a copy in the system font folder as well as your user font folder. So for instance, here we look and we see a dot next to Arial telling us there's a duplicate of Arial. We click on it and it will give us all the different versions of Arial that it's got like bold, bold, italic, etc. If we look at regular we see that there's a one copy here and one copy there. We can view on the right the information. The way I brought this up was I hit Command I and which shows the information. Without Command I you get a preview of the font. So here we've got this version of Arial and this version of Arial. Now if we look through it we can see different things about it. For instance, this is version 2.6 and it's library slash font slash Arial. Click on this one and we can see that it's version 5.0.1.2x and it's library fonts Arial.ttf which explains how there's a duplicate. There's a file called Arial and there's a file called Arial.ttf. Now when deciding which one you want to keep, you look at the version number, but you don't always want to keep the one with the latest version number. It's very likely, for instance, that this one, which is just library slash font slash Arial, is the one that came with your Mac. Whereas this one with the .ttf after it was probably installed by an application that you used on your machine. Now you don't necessarily have to get rid of these duplicates. When in doubt, it's probably best to keep them both there. But if you do get rid of them, I suggest strongly that you go ahead and archive the ones you're getting rid of. You can do this easily by first emptying the trash so there's nothing else in the trash on your Mac. And then as you delete fonts from your Mac from FontBook, they will appear in the trash. Then instead of emptying the trash, move those to another folder like old fonts and maybe save those somewhere or back them up to CD. This way if you end up having a problem later you have an easy way to get these fonts back. Now you can also validate fonts. The way you do that is you simply uh, select a collection or a series of fonts. So I'm going to go ahead and Command A and then in the File menu there's a Validate, validate Fonts function. This is going to bring up this window and it will go through all the fonts in your machine and check to make sure they're all okay. 
So you don't have to go and check all the fonts on your machine, but it, perhaps if you're having a problem with, with a font from an application, you can go ahead and validate that single font to see if there's any issues. Sometimes there's minor problems that are found, which means the font will work fine, it just doesn't fit the current standard. So the problem is, what happens if a font doesn't validate and it's causing you trouble? There's probably not too much you can do about it. You can go find the original font on the installation CD from the application the font came with or from the installation package that you downloaded, but chances are it was that font in the first place that doesn't validate. You can try to find another copy of that font, but if the font is specialized for an application you probably won't be able to. So hopefully you don't find any fonts that are not valid. Another cool thing you can do with Fontbook is you can disable an entire collection of fonts. So for instance, say if the set my fonts or some fonts that I rarely use, maybe once a year when I do a special newsletter or something. I can go ahead and control click on it and click disable my fonts. That will disable all those fonts. So applications that don't use the text panel, like say the ones from Adobe, won't see those fonts at all. But you can easily go back to Fontbook and re-enable those fonts as well. You can also disable and enable fonts one by one. So I can select a font here, control click on it, and disable that particular font. This doesn't get rid of it in any way, it just makes it unavailable to all the applications. Sometimes you have a font that's installed in your machine and works okay in all applications except one. This is because some applications only support certain types of fonts and there are many different types of fonts. In this case, if you really want to use that font, you're going to have to find a version of that font as a different type. You're going to have to either purchase it or purchase a CD collection of fonts that you can then use to replace the one that's not showing up. So that's a quick summary of Fontbook, Font Panel, and how to manage fonts on your Mac. Tomorrow I'll be sending out the second edition of the MacMost email newsletter. Looks like I'm going to be sending out every Thursday. To sign up, go to MacMost.com newsletter. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.